Ahoy training campers! Today I will show here the steps on how to run the Transas Tanker LCC engine room simulator from a cold status condition to full C mode. In this scenario, the objective is to generate the vessel's electrical power requirements from the emergency generator, then transfer the power to two main generators, run the main steam boiler for the vessel's heating requirements, run all propulsion plant auxiliary machinery related systems, run the propulsion plant to full C mode at 90 RPM, and rectify all alarms that are present during the ERS exercise. But first, let us check the simulator's initial condition. Here we have the main engine telegraph is in stop condition. The emergency generator is running and with zero load on the bus bar. The condition of the main boiler is not running. The diesel generator number 1 and 2 are disconnected from the bus bars and the engines is at stop condition. The main propulsion plant and other related auxiliaries are also not running. The provision cooling and air conditioning plants is in a manually off status with alarms. The turbo generator plant, water desalination plant, incinerator, and inert gas systems all are in manually off status with alarms. So, with this initial exercise scenario, let's get started. We first go to the alarm system pages to acknowledge all alarms in all simulator consoles if any has occurred. On the EG page, confirm if the emergency generator is in running condition. Visit the DG1 page. Since the electrical plant control is at manual position, run DG1 pre-lubrication and press preheating on. On the ES page, switch on the seawater, freshwater pump 2, FO circulation pump 2, Emergency Compressor, FO Supply Pump 2, Boiler Burner, DG 1 and 2 Automation, Emergency Lighting, Bridge Lighting, Navigational Lighting, and other related switches. We have now minimal electrical load on the emergency generator. Now let us prepare the diesel generator number 1 system auxiliaries. Go to the Propulsion Plant console, click the CA page, prepare the backup starting system. Open the emergency air receiver valve and start the emergency air compressor. Click to FOS page, verify the fuel selection switches of ME, AE1, and AE2 fuel tank supply valves set to DO consumption. Run the supply and circulation pumps number 2, then switch them to auto running mode. Head on to the SW page, the FW1, LO1, camshaft, compressor and shaft bearing coolers are already open. 
put the temperature controller to auto and start seawater cooling pump number one then switch to automatic running Next is the FW page. The cooler one and ME flow valve are already open. We set the temperature controller to auto position, start FW pump number 2, then set to auto running status. Proceeding back to the electrical plant console, we have load on the EG panel board. The DG1 parameter readings can be noticed on the starting air, seawater, and freshwater pressure gauges. To run diesel generator number 1, press the start button. Once the RPM is at 997, the alternator will produce a steady voltage and hertz. Then, press the connect button to put the generator to the bus bar. The emergency generator has been disconnected from the bus bar, which means all electrical load has been transferred to the main generator number 1. Back to the emergency switchboard page, we switch on all remaining breakers and charge the ship's batteries. Turn on the battery room ventilation, including additional bridge lighting and marine radio switches. We then check the kilowatt on DG number 1. Let us add load to the generator. Proceed to the distribution page. Turn all distribution high voltage breakers to the on position, including the low voltage circuit breakers. Take note, the bow thruster, TR ref, and winch circuit breakers should be off. You need two main generators for it to be utilized. Afterwards, verify the kilowatt on the panel board, which is above 100 kilowatts. We then stop the DG number 1 preheating and the pre-lubrication put to automatic setting. Now, let's prepare the main engine starting systems. On the CA page, open the air receiver number 1 and 2 valves from the compressors. Start both main air compressors and set to automatic running. Stop the emergency air compressor but leave the emergency receiver valve open since the main air receiver is still filling up and to prevent any alarms from occurring. Next, on the LO page, the LO cooler 1 is open already. We start the LO pump number 1, then temperature controller switch to auto mode. The camshaft cooler is already open. We run the fine filter pump and start the camshaft pump 1, then set to auto position. Do not forget to start the fine filter pump to clean the camshaft lube oil tank impurities.
Let us proceed to the boiler. On the SP page, we have a low steam pressure indication on the gauge. Immediately close the rating valve to prevent steam from escaping from the boiler drum. Next, run the boiler fan to pre-purge the gases inside the boiler furnace. Next, line up the boiler fuel system to circulate diesel fuel for the burner consumption. The fuel selection is set to DO. We then open the fuel preheater valve and steam inlet for heating of the burner fuel system. The burner number 1 and 2 stop valves to be opened. Then run number 1 boiler fuel pump and set it to auto operation. Back to the SP page, manually fire the boiler burner number 1 and 2 and check the steam pressure parameter on the gauge to verify production of steam. Fuel temp alarms that occur on the BFS page can be rectified by opening the steam stop valve and consumer heating valve once the boiler pressure reaches 3.5 bars. For the meantime, let us head over to the PC page. We try to resolve the temperature alarms on the provision cooling system. We confirm that there is power to the provision cooling plant. Next, turn on the seawater pump for the reaper plant cooling of the condenser. We then prepare the reaper compressor number one since it is assigned to refrigerate the butter, meat, and fish room chambers. With that, let us open the master solenoid valve, including the shut-up valves on the liquid refrigerant circulation lines. That is the condenser shut-off and filter. Proceed to turn on the compressor number 1, then gradually open the suction valve of the compressor to 10% opening, then observe the suction and discharge pressure gauges. Now, change over the compressor number 1 mode from manual to auto running condition and gradually open the compressor suction valve till it reaches 100% open but monitor the gauge to prevent high suction pressure which may shut down the system. To monitor the provision store room temperatures just click the meat and fish indicator button then verify the thermometer readings which should be at least minus 20 degrees Celsius. On the next page, let us operate the AC system. The power indicator lamp is already on. Set the air conditioner operating mode switch to summer position. Open the valve for feeding water to the compressor cooling and the condenser unit. Turn on the seawater pump. Open the filter and condenser shut-off valves on the liquid refrigerant circulation lines and manually open the master solenoid valve. We run the compressor and when the compressor is on idle running, partially open at least 5% the compressor suction valve. Check suction pressure. Set the compressor operating mode to auto position. Then set the compressor suction valve to be fully open gradually. For the ship's accommodation cooling, just use the manual switches to set the desired temperature in the cabins using the cabin air distribution set switch inside the rooms, or otherwise known as the room thermostats. Heading back to the boiler, let us put the steam pressure controller to automatic. Then, open the main steam valve, including consumer valves, FO heating, FO tank, and separator for heating requirements. On the BFS page, let us raise the fuel temperature by setting the temperature controller to auto mode. 
this will cancel out the fuel temp alarm which gives us the signal to change over the burner fuel supply consumption from diesel oil to heavy oil if the fuel temperature reaches normal condition. Do not forget to open the tracing steam as well as open heating of heavy fuel tank to at least 20% to prevent the bunker fuel from solidifying. Let us now open the superheater valves on the auxiliary and heat recovery boiler. To prevent boiler drum water level alarm problems, we turn on the feed water pump number 1 and circulation pump number 1 and set to auto for automated starting and stopping. Here we also open the condenser return valve to recycle the excess steam not used by the boiler in which steam is converted back to water then stored in the condensate tank and again delivered back to the boiler via the feed pumps. Do not forget to replenish the condensate tank via the tank makeup valve and maintain the level at least 80% capacity. Now let's prepare another diesel generator for the ship's maneuvering operation and departure from port. On DG2 page, run pre-lubrication of DG number 2. Press the preheating on button and then press start button to run the generator and to warm up the engine to its normal rated RPM. For the meantime, let us introduce lube oil to all the main engine cylinders. On the LO page, press the cylinder lubricators from number 1 to number 6, which are designed for pumping oil to the cylinders before starting of the main engine. Prior to main engine starting, on the ELC page, Confirm if the toggle lever is at engine side position. Then, turn gear is to be engaged for flywheel rotation. Press slow turn button for which it will turn the engine crankshaft and subsequently lubricate the internal parts of the main engine. Let us presume that we turn the engine for around 30 minutes. We then disengage the turning gear change over engine side to remote control to position switch for ECR telegraph operation. The bridge telegraph here is to be acknowledged in which we need to ready the engine room for maneuvering operation. Back to the DG2 page, the generator is ready to be connected in parallel to the bus bar. On the synchronizing page, click the DG2 button and reduce the DG2 speed via the governor control buttons. Reduce the generator RPM and monitor the phase sequence or hertz which should be slightly higher or equal to the phase sequence of DG number 1. Both generators must have equal voltage and equal phase to be synchronized and shared at the same time. If DG number 1 hertz is equal with DG number 2, press the connect button of DG number 2 circuit breaker to put the incoming generator to the bus bar. Click onto the sharing page, then press the sharing selector DG1, DG2 button for load sharing of two diesel generators. Balance load on both generators by looking at the ammeter readings and using the generator's governor control, increase load on DG2 and decrease the other generator load until ampere readings are the same. We can also equally balance all the generator parameters by setting the electrical plant control selector switch to auto equal sharing, but switch it back to manual since we still have a low kilowatt power shared on the generator 
as indicated in the panel board. And do not forget to set the generator number 2 pre-lubrication to auto and preheating to off position. We can now ready the main engine for maneuvering operation. On the EXH page, close the air receiver drain valve and auto run the scavenging air blower. On the CA page, drain water via the air receiver number 1 and 2 blowdown valves. Afterwards, open the start air and control air valves on receiver number 1 and we can now close the emergency air receiver valve. Proceed to the OFS page so we can start purification of the main engine sump tank and heavy fuel oil settling tank. Set separator number 1 brake button to off and start separator number 1. Then let the bowl RPM reach about 10,000 RPM. We also do this procedure with separator number 3 which is assigned as the lube oil purifier. Any alarms that occur, just acknowledge it and it will be rectified later. Checking the fuel oil supply system, do not forget to change over the viscosity controller from manual to auto position to heat the fuel up to the required temperature for proper fuel atomization and ejection to the main engine and auxiliary engines. The seawater and freshwater systems are running. We head over to the main engine page and ready the engine control air, main starting valve, and maneuvering program for running up the main propulsion plant. Of course, start two steering gear pumps for the ship's rudder control. Once everything is set and ready, Run the main engine in the ECR control mode by raising the engine telegraph to dead slow position. The engine will develop a minimum RPM at dead slow position, then monitor the engine's exhaust gas parameters including the scavenging temperature. Slowly move the telegraph fan up, or you can fine tune the ETE lever position using the more or less buttons located on the right of the speed set point window. Again, carefully monitor the exhaust temperatures of all cylinders. Be sure that it does not reach above 500 degrees Celsius limit. Increase again the ET lever, then verify the scavenge air parameter. Increase again the ET lever. Then verify the scavenge air parameters, which is scavenging temperature is maintained at around 45 to 50 degrees centigrade. Adjust scavenging air temperature by the scavenge air cooler flow valve, for which we slightly open it to lower the charge air and exhaust gas temperatures back to its normal parameter readings. Now raise again the engine speed gradually, then check again the exhaust gas and turbocharging system 
parameter readings. For the meantime, let's put into service the separator number 3 for loop oil purification. Just press water on and open supply of opening and closing water in the separators. That is, open water and closing water buttons. Open fuel inlet valve and feed pump button on. Flow feed valve should be open at least 60%. Afterwards, turn on heating button and set the required product temperature set point at around 80 degrees centigrade. We then lock the bowl by feeding the closing water, press the close button, and apply sealing water. Repeat the process with separator number 1 or the heavy fuel oil purifier number 1. Now, to rectify alarm on the separator number 2, just turn on heating and move the temperature control setting to the lowest point. Let us visit the main engine control and move the ET lever to above the slow ahead to almost half ahead engine speed set point. In this situation, the present engine speed set point abruptly elevates the temperatures which led to a very high exhaust gas reading. However, the rise of exhaust gas temperatures resulted to an increase of the turbocharger RPM that also led to an additional supply of charged air to the engine, thereby stabilizing the engine cylinder exhaust gas temperature readings. Slowly raising the engine speed to half ahead and constantly checking the exhaust, we have now the option to change over fuel selection of the main engine, auxiliary engine 1, auxiliary engine 2 from diesel oil to heavy fuel oil consumption on the FOS page. Here we are constantly monitoring the turbocharger RPM in which if it reaches the 8000 to 9000 mark, the scavenge air blower should automatically stop. This is the sign that the turbocharger has sufficient charged air to supply the main engine for combustion. With this development, on the main engine control telegraph lever, we could now run up to full C mode at 90 RPM speed set point. Just do not forget to maintain the scavenging temperature at 45 to 50 degrees centigrade by adjusting the scavenge air cooler flow valve estimated 50 to 60 percent open. -end. On the cylinder process page, 
verify on the panel diagnostics regarding the working process in the main engine cylinders and for tuning the fuel supply system. Click each cylinder pressure sensor for comparison of fuel combustion process parameters between the diesel cylinders. So, the engine is running smoothly. Let's check the other auxiliary systems. On the turbo generator page, just run the priming pump to rectify the alarm. Let us operate the fresh water generator. On the WD page window, open the ejector's cutoff valve. Start the seawater pump. Open the feed water supply valve as appropriate for the required plant capacity. Estimated a 20% valve opening for boiler feed water production. Here we have the IGS page. The system is intended for the production and supply of inert gases to the tanker car tanks. Gas with a pressure higher than the atmospheric pressure replaces the fluid fire risk cargo during its pumping out from tanks and created an atmosphere in the tanks which prevents a fire or an explosion. The system is designed to ensure 900 mm of water column overpressures in the tanks with the oxygen content of less than 5%. A detailed IGS process will be discussed on a separate video tutorial, so do watch for it. Back to the desalination plant. The fresh water generator have already reached normal vacuum. You can now open the condenser cooling water supply valve which controls the cooling water flow. We open the evaporator heating water valve. For production of distilled water, just set distillate pump control switch to auto mode, including the salinity control switch. Afterwards, conduct watchkeeping on all ERS consoles. Check if there are no more alarms present on the stations. And that's the end of this simulation exercise on how to operate the tanker LCC engine room simulator from a cold status condition going to full C mode. Thank you campers for watching this video. Please do not forget to like, share, comment, and subscribe to the channel. Also check my other ERS tutorial video link at the end of this video.